to be a cool composition. Yeah, that particular, but also his handling. Uh, his, his handling. His, 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 and his playfulness with the way he pushes the paint around. Lovely paint. Lovely, lovely, lovely paint. I saw that thing. But what I'm, We're exhausted. What I'm struggling with, I just love this one. I love that one. Cool? This one's the coolest. Look at that. So talk about Gary and Baker. Talk more about that. <laughs> What do you like? I, I just I'm, I'm just and blown away by the it was good. You know, the setup here. You know, you know, and that it's been here for this long and it's not well like, visited. All the video games you look at these racks. I mean, like the who has racks one. like this for that their paintings? Like, Isn't it no incredible? No one does. And who has a, a Venus de Milo, you know, in their studio? Yeah. Do you have one? I'm trying to get it. I don't have one. I, I went on Amazon and, and uh, I they ordered make, one. They don't make them. And they ones. sent it to me, it was about this one. <laughs> John Variano, please tell more about this environment. I know you grew up at this studio. Yeah. Well, Frank Mason was my wonderful teacher <laughs> from the University of I started studying with him, I think it was September of 1989. Wow. So uh, it was a while ago. 
and it was a you know, really invigorating experience. However, I started with him here in this space right here and come this way. And I just want to yeah. just go down there because on Tuesday nights, he would have, let's he let's would have a drawing yes. class back there. So, so every um, Tuesday night, so yeah, it's like, it's just about how you think about there would be a so, model so, um, set up right, right by the Woodstock. Wow. Yeah. So this was so the area that we would, that we would come. Every Tuesday night, we'd come here, and it was great. This is in the 90s. And we have the model stand set up right over here. Yeah. And we'd have this cranking in the, on a winter night. It would be cold in here. Because as you can see, there's no insulation. Yes. <laughs> and we would be set up on these benches right along this cold wall. <laughs> so we'd be wearing our coats a lot of time. Model was warm, but we were cold. And we would be set up here and we would draw. But warm souls, yes. And warm how many souls people mostly the from the league? It was people from Mason's class. Yeah. You know, so we were the students of Frank Mason at the Art Students League, and then those of us who could make it, we would come here and do the drawing class with him on Tuesday nights. And we would draw here. Sometimes he would come down. And what years was that? that? What years were those? 91 through 96, 97. Mom. But he had had this class here for a while. And he had this studio in this building. He was, he was in this building, so this is just a lower level. Yeah. What you're seeing here is just essentially storage and shop. Upstairs is his own space, his own studio, and his living space. So right? this is actually his own studio. Upstairs. Upstairs. No, upstairs. upstairs. Yeah. Okay, yeah. this is so, for, for the students. So where this was for the students, for the storage, and for the shop. Right. At the other end is the shop. Where we would frame things for. So I'm here putting you up go. placards describing oh, all the stuff so this guy doesn't have to be all hot breath. All right? Scott Mason, <laughs> can you tell please a little bit about this event? Oh, yeah, we're just, uh, is the lighting all right here? Do yes, I have it's perfect, but it's more about the it's energy. Like more it's about the energy. No, uh, so we're, we're putting on this event because we're trying to spread more awareness that. Places like this still exist in Manhattan. And we want them to continue to be preserved and be Absolutely. like this for as long as they can be. So uh, that requires purchasing artwork. Yeah. <laughs> and donations. And, so, and donations. And well, the, we prefer you get something for giving us something, which is your money for these beautiful works of art. But it's, amazing. it's mainly uh, spreading awareness and letting people know that uh, the. Manhattan is traditionally supposed to be about artists. And if you don't have the preservation of the artwork, you don't have a culture. You, you wash it over what's, with a bunch of white balls. What's your name again? What's your name again? <laughs> Just so John Variano. <laughs> I'm going to put these on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, what but, but, he had, but when he had, he would do sometimes a very solid, very, I mean, and you see it here, he would do a very rich underpainting. Right. It would be like, like almost like, it almost feels sometimes like a cadmium orange. It wasn't cadmium orange, but it felt very warm. A very warm underpainting. So like an impromptu on top of the canvas before he painted. So he was painting into extreme warmth. No, I can see that right here. Right. And then he yeah, would just, this is just, this is just his, this is just his blacks scumbled on top of it. That's this is it. black? I would suspect it is, yeah. Yeah, but how do you get this transition? Well, he, no, he, there, 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 he, there is a red there. Yeah, but this, this reminds me of the kinds of transitions you see in 17th century painting. So how did he, how did he get, he would have to Russian. Yeah, what you said, how did he get that? And I don't mean the color, and I don't mean the, the, the variation. The paint quality. I mean the quality yes. of the patina. Yes. How did he get that? I, I think because, I, look, I think the mediums that he was using, I don't think as much as the surface of the, paint, of the uh, canvas. Yeah. I think it was more... Remember, he's also using a stiff brush. Yeah. That, and, and, he's, and he's just and he's just kind of working it in. Oh, okay. You know, this is already pretty subtle. It's pretty yeah. true. Yeah. You know, right. and he's just this, working this, this kind of this kind of thing is.
very similar to what you know is in yeah paintings right. that you don't yeah. see in the right. 20th century. Agree. Yes. Agree. You know. Well, yes. yes. Even these movements here. Even these movements here. Yeah, right. Yeah, but I'm not even because. And they go into this. And right, into right, here. Right. No, so good. Look, just this movement right. from here yeah. right to here. It's unbelievable. It's just so beautiful. Because it's not that. Now, you could actually do it the other way. Sergeant would talk about don't paint transparencies transparently, just paint them. As if they were transparent. Right. So, like, use like a you no know, paint note right. that did that. Well, I mean, he would do but the same would, thing. Yeah. They would, but he would. They of would course. lose the edge exactly. and then come back with right. the dark to right. find the edge. So, I'm not, that's not what's curious to me. What, what I was curious about, since you see the how you got these patinas. I'm not talking about the style. I'm talking He's dry brushing on top of it. You can see it here, right? I think he's just dry brushing on top of it. Now, remember, as much as I was with him, and I, and I, when he would work on these things, a lot of us didn't see these kind of stuff. So, but we, just by, by being around him and him critiquing us, we would see it. Yeah. But you can see it here. You can see where he's like, kind of like just hitting these darks yeah. right on top. And then he's just losing it. And then he's 